Welcome back to another episode of What's in the Night Sky, sponsored by Squarespace. And it is December 2021. The year is coming to an end already, which is crazy. Uh, a quick announcement, it's your last chance to get the 2022 What's in the Night Sky calendars. Once stock run out this month, and they certainly will, that'll be it. That'll be the last chance you can get the calendar. So it features 12 of my images and the dates of significant astronomical events are pre-written into the calendar. There'll be a link in the video description down below. Coming up this month, we have a lot of exciting events to end the year. So we have the very promising Comet Leonard, which may become a naked eye visible comet. We have one of the best meteor showers of the year with the Geminids. There is a total solar eclipse there's a lunar occultation of Mars where the moon will block Mars from view. And we can look forward to four of the five naked eye visible planets in the evening skies. But before we deep dive into all of that and more, a quick message from the sponsors of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace is the place to host your website or online store. And I know from personal experience because my website's been with Squarespace for the past four or five years now, and I've been a very happy customer. I use it to sell my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets. It's also where you can purchase the 2022 What's in the Night Sky calendar. And of course, it's a place where you can host your galleries so your images look absolutely beautiful because there's no compression like there is on social media. You can also use Squarespace as a blog as well and post blog format posts as well. If you'd like to give Squarespace a try, head on over to squarespace.com forward slash Allen. You can start with one of their award-winning templates, but you can customize that template to your heart's content so that your website is exactly how you want it. And if you are happy and you want to continue with Squarespace and you want your website to go live, use the code Allen at the checkout for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain with Squarespace. Starting with a general look at the Northern Hemisphere night sky, you'll notice Ursa Major very low on the northern horizon at the start of the evening. That's climbing into the northeast. And swinging to the west-northwest, you'll notice the Cygnus region of the Milky Way, a very bright fuzzy region of the Milky Way in the west-northwest, and that sinks down to the northwestern horizon as the night goes on. Facing southwest in the evening skies, you'll also notice a trio of planets. You have Jupiter, Saturn, and Venus. Venus shining the brightest, followed by Jupiter and then Saturn. you also notice Comet Leonard there, which I'll talk more about later. Um, but as we get towards the end of the month, you'll notice Mercury coming up to meet Venus and join in the party as well. So ending the year with four beautiful planets in the evening skies. Still in the evening skies, you'll notice the likes of Orion, Taurus, Auriga, Gemini, rising into the east very early in the evening now. Sirius rising in the southeast around 9 p.m. So you have the full winter circle asterism of bright stars in the sky now, nice and early. And as the night goes on, they all cross high into the south. So it can be a really good time to do some star tracking. You have Pleiades, a really awesome beginner target, the open star cluster. Uh, close to Pleiades is the California Nebula, if you have an astral modified camera. And of course, there are lots of goodies to be photographed in Orion, such as the Orion Nebula. Facing east in the pre-dawn hours, you'll also notice Mars rising into the morning skies. So, an opportunity to see all five of the naked eye visible planets this month. Into the southern hemisphere and in the evening skies you'll find the large and small Magellanic clouds very high in the south. And if I just zoom out and face a bit east you'll notice the Milky Way arching over the eastern horizon. So you have the region of the Milky Way that runs through the southern summer circle, what we know as the winter circle in the northern hemisphere and then down to the Carina and Vela region of the Milky Way in the south. The southern summer constellations continue to rise higher and higher into the sky as the night goes on so again really good opportunity to do some star tracking on Pleiades, the California Nebula, the Orion Nebula, so many good beginner targets 
in this region of the night sky for star trackers. Facing west in the evening skies, you'll notice a trio of planets. You have Venus, the brightest, Saturn, and Jupiter. And as we approach the end of the month, you'll notice Mercury coming up to meet Venus and join in the party. So we end in the month with four beautiful planets in the western skies. The fifth naked light visible planet, Mars, rises in the east in the pre-dawn hours. And towards the end of the month, you'll also see that it's right next to Antares, which is the rival of Mars, which is translated from anti-Ares. And they both shine at a similar magnitude and have a very similar colour. So there's a really nice op photographic opportunity there. As for close approaches and conjunctions this month, between the 6th, the 7th and the 8th and the 9th is when a crescent moon will be passing by Venus, Saturn and Jupiter in the evening sky. So really nice photographic opportunity there. And then at the very end of the month, on the morning of the 31st, is when a very thin crescent moon will be joining Mars and Antares in the morning skies. Now on to the special events this month, and perhaps the most exciting event this month is of course Comet Leonard. Now, this comet was discovered by Greg Leonard, an astronomer at the Mount Lemmon Observatory in Arizona at the start of the year. And after it was discovered, astronomers worked out its trajectory and saw that it was coming through the solar system. So during December, during this month, it's going to pass by Earth and Venus very close. And then in January is when it reaches its closest approach to the Sun, otherwise known as perihelion. And it was also predicted that this comet would perhaps become naked eye visible. So after the excitement of Comet Neowise, waiting this year for Comet Leonard has been a very nerve-wracking and anxious wait, but it's finally here and it's finally visible and photographable in the night sky. So it starts the month only visible from the northern hemisphere. You can catch it in the eastern skies in the dark hours just before sunrise. So it rises in the east before the sun and it follows a path down past Arcturus, which is a very bright star uh, in that region of the night sky, which you can use to locate the comet and this comet's moving extremely fast like more than 150,000 miles per hour which is more than 250,000 kilometers per hour so every night it changes positions quite significantly uh, and you can see during the first sort of 10 days of December it's uh, lower and lower in the eastern skies in the pre-dawn hours so it rises later and spends less time as the month goes by. Then around December the 14th or 15th, depending on your exact position, is where the comet goes from a, a morning object to an evening object. And it's also around this time when it starts to become visible for those of you in the southern hemisphere. So after the 14th, you'll start to see the comet in the evening skies just after sunset. And it sort of stays below Venus. For the next few days, it sort of stays very low on the western horizon. And as time goes by, it heads more and more into the southwest. But it's always very low on the horizon, visible just after sunset. Now, the question remains, how bright will Comet Leonard get? So, at the moment, it's very much following the predicted light curve. So it's as bright as we kind of expected it to be, which is extremely unlike a comet. And so if it continues to follow predictions during very early December, it should hopefully become just about naked eye visible. And to be naked eye visible, an object in the night sky needs to have an apparent magnitude of plus six or lower. Uh, so plus six is like the limit of naked eye visibility. Peak brightness is not expected to occur until the 15th or the 17th around there, where it's predicted to be as bright as plus four magnitude, so certainly naked eye visible. But one thing to remember is that it's not going to be as bright as a plus four magnitude star because a comet is a much more diffuse source of light than a sort of pinpoint star. So it's going to be very difficult to see with the naked eye. It will certainly look beautiful through a pair of binoculars or you know a relatively amateur telescope and it will certainly show up in your photographs. But it may be a bit of a struggle to see with your naked eye. 
I'll put some links in the video description down below for more information about where to find the Comet for your specific location. Or you could download the desktop application Stellarium, or you can go to stellarium-web.org, and there you'll find Comet Leonard. So it'll be labeled as C2021. And if you want, you can change the date and time to whatever you want, and you can see where it's gonna be for your location at any date or time. So good luck Comet hunting. Now we also have one of the best meteor showers of the year this month in the Geminids. It normally peaks around the 13th to the 14th of December, where sometimes you can expect 100 to 150 meteors per hour with perfect viewing conditions. But unfortunately this year, during the peak, the moon will be more than 77% illuminated. So it's certainly going to reduce those rates and it's going to wash out a lot of the fainter, smaller meteors. But Gemini meteors do tend to be quite bold and bright, uh, almost white in colour. So a lot of them will certainly still shine through the moonlight. But thankfully the moon does set at around 4am local time. So you will get some hours in the pre-dawn hours with no moon in the sky uh, and some good viewing conditions for the Geminids. The radiant point is of course in the constellation Gemini. So although it does slightly favor the Northern Hemisphere, it is visible from the Southern Hemisphere as well. It's a meteor shower that can be enjoyed all around the world. And remember, you don't have to look in the direction of the radiant point to see meteors. They will streak all across the sky. So try and look at as much of the sky as you possibly can. Now on December the 4th is a super exciting event with a total solar eclipse where the moon blocks the sun entirely from view and you're able to see the sun's corona. It's one of the most incredible astronomical events to witness. But sadly, the path of totality passes through Antarctica. So you have to be in Antarctica to see this event. So it's only gonna be the most hardcore of eclipse chasers. So I won't go into much more detail in this video. Lastly, if you are in Southern Australia, you will be lucky to observe a lunar occultation of Mars. So this is where the moon passes in front of Mars and blocks it from view for about half an hour. And the event starts at around about 6 p.m. local time. Um, but I'll put some links in the video description down below for some more specific times for your exact location. But it's only visible from Southern Australia on the 31st on New Year's Eve. So I wish you guys a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. That's it for this month. So now onto the hashtag Wittens. For those of you that are new here, every month I set a target subject or theme for people to photograph and then upload the images to social media using the hashtag Wittens. I then pick my favorite three of the month to win a prize. Third place wins a copy of my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets. Second place wins a What's in the Night Sky t-shirt. And first place wins a Photo View Photography Guidebook of their choice. This month, all the winners will also receive a 2022 What's in the Night Sky calendar. Last month's theme was any of the special events of the month. So without further ado, in third place was Star-Lord with this incredible, bright, torrid fireball such a beautiful meteor, some gorgeous green colors, and I'm still praying for the day that I capture a meteor like this for myself. And the streak running across the sky was from a SpaceX launch as well, so an amazing combo of events in the night sky. In second place was Aloha Kai Noa with this lovely image of the, uh, the partial lunar eclipse and that was right next to Pleiades in the sky as well. So an incredibly rare opportunity and captured and processed very, very nicely. And in first place was this picturesque scene from Nightscape Art of the partial lunar eclipse set in, in the evening skies over the UK. Very beautiful countryside scene, the moon nice and big in the frame using a 600 millimeter lens. The colors are just pastel and gorgeous. And I just love this image. It's very difficult to capture the partial lunar eclipse and get a really nice natural looking image. But having that twilight ambient light just makes things a little bit easier. And it's a very nicely balanced image. So really, really love this one. This month, of course, it has to be 
Comet Leonard. So I'm really excited to see how you guys photograph this comet. I'm looking forward to seeing how bright and how big the tail gets. So fingers crossed we have a really nice, beautiful comet in the sky this month. And that's it for this month, guys. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of What's in the Night Sky. Make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies. Mm -hmm.